today. All new. I'm not gonna cry. Turn those cameras off for a second. Adult children of divorce confront their parents after 30 years of pain, a mother and daughter's moment of truth. You're holding on to the anger and destroying all the people around you. It's been nine years since they've all been in the same room. Did you have any idea how much your daughters were still suffering? What to say, how to say it. As an example for the whole country. If you're still pained years after your parents' divorce, this is the show for you. Where do they go from here? Next. I'm really excited about this show today. And the reason is because Last year, 2007, my favorite show of the entire year was a show we did with Gary Newman talking to young children about divorce. And there was a little boy named Chris and his sister, Daisy, who were on that show. I just never forgot them. They were so heart-rendering. And we aired that show, of course, and got so many thousands of emails, like this one, from 36-year-old LaDon from California who said, Oprah, please consider doing a show about adult children of divorce because I can tell you the pain doesn't magically disappear when you turn 18. Also, 46-year-old Elizabeth from Indiana wrote, I've hurt for the past 33 years because of the divorce of my parents when I was 13. Now as an adult, the sadness and depression is always in my core. 26-year-old Stacy wrote to us from Arkansas saying, 20 years later, she's still facing the pain of her parents' divorce, that she's cried herself to sleep for many, many years, and has always blamed herself. So this is a very painful subject for many adult children. And while thousands of you were comfortable uh, writing to us, few of you really agreed to talk to us on camera, except for 38-year-old Melissa, who was married with three children, agreed to talk to us. My parents divorced when I was around 11. If I go back to that moment, I can remember everything. My mother was sitting at the kitchen table with a roll of pink toilet paper, and she said, you know, your father and I are getting divorced. It stopped me in my tracks, and I'm not even sure I'm over it. The one thing that I always felt is that he never really apologized to me. He never. even after all these years. Okay, sorry. Once my parents got divorced, um, my mother was so angry. She was just mad all the time. I think um, my mothering changed after the divorce. All I really wanted to do was be a wife and a mother. And when the relationship ended, all of that ended also. I didn't really dwell on, oh my God, my father's not here. We really just dwelled on her emotional state, which was awful. I had to leave my children to go to work, to school. They argued with me a lot more. I just didn't want to hear a lot of it. All I heard was my mother putting me down and saying, you know, why are you going out with that boy? Or why are you working in this restaurant, like a two-bit waitress, or you're not good enough. And I have to fight that negative voice in my head today. My frustration with her is that she can't own up to those mistakes and get past them. And I can't get past them if she won't admit them. So divorce expert Gary Newman is back with us. Uh, were you surprised by how many, I was shocked by how many adult children are still in this space that Melissa shares? I mean, after all the shows we've done to show what really happens to kids, that's yeah. what we're about because if you don't correct it, it really lasts for 20, 30, 40 years. It does not go away. Well, what is the best way then to deal with the anger that you just expressed on that tape? It really is about the expression and having your parents understand. If you have the opportunity, and that's what we're about today, to be able to have a parent re-understand for the first time often what happened to you so many years ago, that mere expression helps it. So if everybody who is watching today uh, just had the opportunity or gave themselves the opportunity yes. 
to speak to their parents about it, that would begin the healing process for them? Yes. And for a lot of people, it would actually bring closure just to be able to say it out loud. It, it does. Okay. Now when we're older, often we think, oh my gosh, I can't do that to my parents. It will break them apart. Uh-huh. Yet, we'll show today that you can do it in such a way that protects your parents' feelings in a calm way. And through that method, you can really express it and they can hear it and you can really change okay. how you relate to So by to the end of the other. show, you're gonna give us the steps of what to say. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about breaking them open. Right. But also don't have to allow yourself to continue to be broken right. because of it. You should know, those of you watching, Melissa has two sisters who have their own issues with their parents' divorce. One agreed to come today, but then backed out, and the other refused to be here. So Melissa worked with Gary to prepare to face her mother. Watch this. Tell me what your concern is about her coming in here. I don't want her to feel attacked. I don't want her okay. to be surprised that she came here willingly, but I don't think she understands the depth of my feelings, and I don't know that she wants to deal with it or even hear it. Do you think your mother, like, got you or knew who you were as a No, not girl? at all. I didn't think she cared. You learned early on that you didn't, you didn't matter that much. To her, definitely. I'm not gonna cry. Turn those cameras off for a second. Why? Can I just stand up for one second? I won't go far, I just need one second. Most, what's the matter? I'm saying with crying, are you upset about crying? I just don't cry. It's just hard to talk about. But what's the matter with crying? I'm not sure what the problem is. It's just, you know, this is the past. I have a wonderful life, and I just, I don't but, want to hurt you're... my parents today, you know, by them but... seeing this. It doesn't hurt your mother that you're crying, <laughs> that it still hurts you. Just give me one more minute. Sure. I say I talk about it, but I don't think I've ever really talked about it. This is a very long time ago. Okay, but this, but feelings are time travelers. They don't go away just because we're older. If you were little again, and you could say something to her, what would you say to her? I'd probably say, you know, you should love us. You should love me. We're still here, and we could love you back. I mean, life didn't have to be over. And I think in a lot of ways her life was over when my dad left. <laughs> well said, well said. And so all that emotion, you said you don't normally cry, but all of that is real, you know, is real. Those are oh, real definitely. tears. And what you said, uh, feelings don't go away. Uh, it's, a, it's a time trap, what did you say? Feelings are time travelers. They remain, when we have feelings as Feelings youth, are time travelers, travelers. And they don't go away just because you get older. Right, and we, act, we keep re-experiencing the same mm -hmm. feelings mm -hmm. as we navigate life. We keep hitting the nerve again and again. And one of the things that Melissa was expressing, why people don't want to bring it up, is she did not even want to really recognize that this voice negative in her still is so vibrant. We want to believe we got over it, yeah. but fighting it just keeps it bubbling up at the wrong time. Yeah, I think what you're saying is also um, a mature way of looking at it. I don't want to you know, live in the past. I don't right. want to bring the past. I realize that now is now, but you are in many ways carrying the, until you resolve it. Well, right. my own yeah. sense of wellness and health. Yeah. To say it is so freeing. Yeah. We'll be right back. Coming up, Melissa confronts her mother after 30 years of pain. So the wounds of divorce linger long past childhood. Almost 30 years after her parents' divorce, Melissa is finally ready to confront her mother. Take a look. Tell your mom the negative voice that you kind of attach to the mom. 
I feel like I have problems from my childhood or loneliness or, ne you know, the negative voice in my head that I'm not good enough. I guess I just need you to know that you hurt me and that I wanted you there and I needed you and I missed you and it affected me that you weren't there. I just feel like, you know, you didn't care about us. Do you feel bad for some of those things as far as a mother? No. I feel I did the best I could. When I married Melissa's father, I married him for life and we didn't stay together. It made me incredibly angry. It changed my relationship with my children. She feels that when your husband left you, you couldn't love her anymore. She wonders sometimes if even with dad's leaving, perhaps there were small things that you could have done. What are some of the things that Just mom could have done? Just maybe not, you know, shut us out because he shut you out. I mean, that's really what happened. Have you ever apologized or felt some remorse? Apologized that I wasn't there? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Or? She's just trying to tell you that she missed certain things with you. There's definitely a part of me that knows that I suffered in some way from you not being who you could have been, you know, if you were happy. I want you to still be able to understand her experience as a child was different somewhat than the experience you think she had as a child. I didn't ever want to cause my children any problem. Okay. You take a moment that you perhaps did not or weren't able to when she was nine or 10 or 11 and you wanted to tell her what you thought about her, okay? Mm -hmm. Could you do that for us? I feel bad. I adored you. You were my sanity. She was the one that would start dinner. You were the one that would clean the house. I knew when I came home, things would be okay. You did, and you did a good job, you know? You did. And I appreciated that from you. I didn't know that you knew that even. I'm sorry, honey, for any discomfort, pain, anything. You know that, right? I do now. So, Gary, you want to address something that uh, Rosemary said to Melissa during that confrontation? Well, one point is so wonderful how you were able to connect. But I do want to make a comment for all the other parents out there that although Rosemary was so appreciative of all the things that her daughter did, there was a lot of leaning on her. You know, uh, Melissa did come become kind of the parent to you at that time. And we want to make sure that parents going through divorce as much as we know how difficult it is for them, we want them to get their own help and to kind of learn from this that you can't lean on your child to that extent where she becomes your sanity. And there's almost an apology necessary in that area that as much as I, I wanted what was best for you, I did depend so heavily on you. And that's perhaps somewhere else that we can go in another conversation. What was that like for you, hearing this from Melissa? Um, it's difficult to hear it because I always put the blame on my divorce and my anger on my ex-husband mm -hmm. because, and I've told this to Gary, you know, I was very young when I got married. I was a high school dropout. Um, when we separated and then divorced, I had to go to school. Um, I had to get a full-time job. I had to move. I had to give away my dog. And I had to take care of three little girls. Mm -hmm. And it was incredibly difficult, incredibly. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, um, Obviously, the reason why we do these shows is not just because we want to delve into your life, but to let your life be a teaching tool, a learning example for, for everybody else who's watching. Right. And something that you said really struck me, and I think for everybody who's going through a divorce, who's been through a divorce, who will go through a divorce in this country, it's really important to hear, hear, hear fully what you said when you... You said to Melissa, you know, I always wanted, I'm paraphrasing here, I always wanted the best for you. You know, I really loved you, but I was angry. And I think it's really important for people to know that you holding on to your anger is what this is really all about. And that your being angry, holding on to that anger, is what really changed the dynamic of the relationship with, with you and your daughters, your children. That anger. Your husband's gone on, your ex-husband's gone on with his life, mm -hmm. 
and you're holding on to, isn't this a classic example? You're holding on to the anger and destroying all the people around you and sure. letting the poison of that anger filter to everybody around you. You're, you're displacing it on, onto everybody else. And, and I think a, a crucial moment for you was, and for your daughter, was when you said, I don't feel bad because I did everything I could. Yeah. And Melissa and I helped you understand that you can feel bad for your child and even what you did that contributed to that problem and pain, and it doesn't make you a bad person. Mm -hmm. We know you tried your best. These parents did not intentionally try to hurt their children commonly until you can just feel what it was like to be your daughter at that time she has tremendous difficulty going on. And what a wonderful thing to be able years later, no matter how long, it's never too late, to be able to take away pain that you might have caused just by going back with her and allowing her to let you feel with her what it was like. Can you see the, how your anger mm -hmm. changed you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I can. Mm -hmm. I'm still angry. I could hear it when you were talking about it. I'm still I angry. So bad. Yeah. It's, she's still angry. You're still and, angry. And I have a new husband. I mean, I've been married for 13 years now, but I'm still angry. Because... You're still angry with the old one? Yeah. And the I point am. of that is what? There is no point. I think... It's what are you angry about at this just point? Just the whole situation that he what was she my... she thought her life could have been. Right. He what was it my was first going love, and I was 14 when I met him and married him at 16. And... Yeah, so I, you're I, angry because you're holding on to the dream? I think so. I think we also, also have to understand that Rosemary shared some things about her own childhood. Mm -hmm. So I think this touched back to the pain of five years old when she had to leave her family at that time. So your work, I think, to deal with that anger is to go back to your own childhood and do some of the work because you got very stuck there. And every time somebody walks away from you, you feel like you're five years old and we all feel for you. But we want you to heal, not have to put that out on everyone else. Where do they go from here? Well, they continue the conversations that they have. The change in Melissa when her mom just looked at her and talked to her as though she was 10 years old and said how much she thought she was wonderful and how much she loved her, just for you to be able to continue to say those beautiful, real thoughts and feelings to your daughter is immeasurable as far as the good that it does for the two of you. So it's a beginning. Absolutely. We yeah. had a, a wonderful experience and yeah. a wonderful couple of days without yeah. anyone else. Are you glad you did it? Uh, absolutely. And will you continue? Absolutely. There is interference, you know, from other family members, but no one can take away the understanding that we have now of each other, no mm. matter what. It's a good start. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. For having the courage to do it. And you also, Rosemary. Thank okay. you. We'll be right back. Coming up, after nine years of silence, three grown-up daughters tell their divorced parents how they really feel. I just finished watching your show about children of divorce, and I was very touched. I, too, was a child of divorce and went through several of the things that the children talked on your show about. Not only did I feel trapped in the middle of my parents, but I felt it was my responsibility to keep my family together. I still struggle every day with thoughts of a broken family, and I am petrified that this is going to happen to me. Jessica and her sisters, Amy and Molly, are in their 20s, and their parents split nine years ago, and the whole family hasn't been together in the same room since. Here's what happened to the King family. My favorite memories of my childhood were when we were all together. And every Saturday we'd go to dinner and we'd come home and it was a big treat because we got to sleep in our parents' room. So that was probably my favorite. We were married for about 16 years when things started kind of getting very difficult for me. I got real busy taking care of the kids and he got real busy working. We basically were roommates. I was devastated when I found out they were going to get divorced. It still hurts, I mean, it never goes away. I think, I don't think I'll ever completely feel better. 
My dad and I stopped talking a lot of times. I mean, I blamed him for everything. My mom would tell me stuff like, I wanted to go to counseling to, with your dad and make it work, and he didn't want to. And then I would automatically be like, wow, why wouldn't dad want to make it work? I kind of used her as a girlfriend, I guess. I really wanted Tim to look like the bad guy, too. I wanted everyone to know that I was innocent and, you know, he was the one that was wrong. I think she wanted to tell me everything. And when it was that, I just say, okay, stop, I can't. I can't, I don't want you to tell me anymore. I think as time went on, I really thought the girls were dealing with it very well. I think all in all, they're pretty well adjusted. This is a picture of, um, of me and Laurie, my wife. Um, we were married in September of 2006. It was big and it was difficult when my dad got married. It was fine until they said their vows. And that was hard <laughs> because you knew that he said those to my mom. Like it's a, a death of a, of a family that, you know, it was again like just one more thing that just showed that we were never going to be the same. Well, these young ladies are, are still grieving. You know, we think that just because it's nine years later, it's done. You know, they never really had any closure. If you don't have any explanation, if things just break apart and everybody goes their separate ways, at that, mo that moment gets frozen in time, and, and there's a death, and we've never had an opportunity to look at it, and everybody's twisting their heads around wondering what the heck happened, and nine years later passes like a second. That's why the show that we did previously with Chris and Daisy yes. uh, was so important in learning how to talk to your kids, because that was such a shock to learn. Most people don't talk to their kids at all. Right. So here's what happened when uh, Jessica, Amy, and Molly met with Gary just two days ago. What's the biggest mistake you think your parents or one of your parents made through this? Mom shut down. Dad worked. And so we were just left with nothing. It hurt. Yeah, how did it hurt? Well, Dad was always the head of the family. And then I guess when he left, it kind of felt like he didn't care if we worked it out or not. I wanted to fix everyone and fix everything, and I couldn't. And trying to stay strong for my parents and st trying to stay strong for my sisters, but really being a mess myself. So you had all the responsibility <laughs> without any of the control. Yes, and that was hard. Mom was so upset through the whole thing. She stayed in her room a lot, and emotionally, I didn't think my mom was there, and physically, my dad wasn't there, right. so. What would you like to get out of talking to your parents, seeing your parents today? You're still hurting, so there's still Which something there. Here. Of course, of course. I don't know why I'm hurting. Okay. Perhaps um, if you tell your parents some of the things you share today. They know. I've said all of it. It's, that's what's con confusing. Maybe it's not what you say to them as much as if we say it again. Maybe I can help what they say back to you. We'll be right back. Coming up, after nine years of silence, the sisters come face to face with their divorced mom and dad. Next. So together in the same room for the first time in over nine years, watch as Jessica, Amy and Molly face their divorced parents. We talked before about some of the mistakes that your parents had made. Molly, go ahead. I feel like the biggest mistake that was made with mom, you're a little too open with me and I knew you're upset, but I didn't really want to hear it. You know, that's probably my biggest regret <laughs> is that, um, and I was really trying hard to manipulate your father. I just, you know, I really wanted to uh, save the marriage. Well, I just, mom, you know, you just, she just shut down emotionally for a while. And, 
dad just maybe not enough talking about it and not a, you know to, that was kind of made us feel like you didn't care as much or weren't hurting as bad as we all were I think I was most angry about not being made to talk um, about issues that I had we tried we made the best best attempt we could. It's interesting now for me to find out that, you know, you 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 wanted us browbeating trying to get more out of you. No, no. <laughs> well, that's what it feels like. That's why it's important to clarify, because she's not really saying that you need to browbeat her, and, and we need to understand that. We did get a lot of, you know, uh, do you want to talk about it? No. Um, what's wrong, honey? Nothing. What I wanted to say to Amy is that your anger scared the daylights out of me. I really couldn't handle anger. I know I'm not easy to talk to. But that puts a lot of a lot on you. I feel that you had difficulty communicating. Your parents had no idea how to reach you. And the simplest, I don't want to talk about it, threw them for a loop. That may have been just the response we wanted. You know, maybe we didn't want to have to try and 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 push you a little harder. So when Amy was angry, she didn't want you to say, okay. She wants you to say, you have a right to be angry. And then I'll bet you that she wouldn't be so angry anymore. There's nothing to be angry about if everybody understands, if, if you can understand her. After talking today that you can think about what it was like to be them and you could tell them that you are sorry for these things. I'm sorry that, um, that, we, that I hurt you, that I didn't, you know, listen when you needed me to listen or that I wasn't there when you needed me to be there. From this point on, I will not give up when you tell me that I'm okay and I don't want to talk about it. How does it make you feel hearing them tell you that they're going to do things different and, and that they're sorry about it? I think it feels hopeful. Um, it makes me feel better to know that they understand. It gives me hope that, you know, even though, you know, there's still divorce, there still is the five of us. I don't have to see it so uh, broken. Colleen and Tim, did you have any idea how much your daughters were still suffering, Colleen? No, not to that extent, I don't believe. Did you, Tim? No, not at all, not at all. I think that uh, we knew the pain would last a long, long time, and, and I think we know now it'll last forever, but just really didn't realize it was as bad as, as it is. And you say parents need to get over the fact that they are being blamed. Oh, gosh, yes, because That's it is hard, though, because so no parent hard. wants you coming back telling me what I didn't do. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's painful as a parent to think that you contributed or hurt your child. But I, I find it so fascinating because most adults, they, they're not looking to say to their parent, I blame you and I'm allowed to go on and screw up in my life because of you. They really are just looking for some understanding. If parents could hear it and just say, I, I just understand you, I can apologize, but I know that you're not telling me I'm a bad person, that way they don't have to defend themselves because sometimes when parents talk, they try to excuse their behavior. You know what I was going through? Yeah. And I say, are you excusing your behavior or are you explaining it? You can explain it, and it can be understandable, but that does not make it excusable. Uh -huh. If you don't understand what's going on, you will forever be distant from your child. Here's the chance I thought, to come back to your I thought kid. what Tim said was so interesting when he would ask, um, you know, the girls, what's going on, or do you want to talk about it? And they'd say, I don't want to talk about it. Don't He's, buy it. Yeah. Don't, don't buy, buy it. it. Don't buy it. Kids want to be... They want it pulled out of them. What they don't want is they don't want to hurt you. That's what we've learned. So they aren't talking because they don't want to overwhelm you with their feelings. So they say, no, no, don't. everything's fine, everything's great, you know, and it's a parent's job to say, look, I'm big enough, I'm capable, you can tell me whatever you need to tell me. I thought it was interesting that Colleen said um, that she was so surprised that Amy was so angry. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't it interesting how parents feel angry themselves about what's happening, but don't think that the children would feel angry about what's happening. Yeah, the anger flows. You know, now the children are raised in an environment where they see the behavior of anger, and that's the way their parent navigates life. Well, guess what? 
that's the way I learned to navigate life from my parents' behavior. That mm -hmm. anger keeps vibrant and keeps going. And so where do they go from here? Well, they have committed to continue to meet together, as is have respect for this original family, and be able to you know, keep talking in that way. And these parents really are wanting to listen. They all have had these little conversations before, but they've never sat down and really One explored. Offs. Yeah, and, and yeah. they really did hear things that they just didn't know. And how they all breathe such a sigh of relief. You know, you see it when you watch the people. They, they start to breathe differently physically when they start to hear their parents really understand and get them. Well, thank you, King family. Thank, thank you all for being here. We'll be right back. As an example for the whole country, thank you so much. Thank you. A lot of courage. Coming up, a successful wife and mother who can't move past her parents' divorce nearly 30 years ago. That's next. So Gary says there are, there are rules, about five of them, for a successful confrontation. confrontation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, number one... Um, with your parents. Right, with your parents. Uh, set your intention. This is not a time to vent and just scream at your parents and confront them in an unhealthy way. It's really, you have to know what your goal is and what you're coming for. Yeah. Uh, number two is you want to define the rules for your parents. Spoon feed them in a way and explain to them that this is not about blame, but this is just that you want them to understand you. Yeah. They just have to comment. How that divorce affected, affected you. Affected me at the time. That's right. all I need from you, mom right. or dad. Uh, number three is don't attack. You know, it's, you have to focus on your feelings. You want to say things like, um, I was really lonely and scared that summer when you went away and I couldn't reach you. That's much better than, how in the world could you leave me that summer? You know, that, that kind of attacking behavior. So keep it on I and your feelings. Absolutely. Number four is to be specific. Just talking about, I was sad and I was lonely. Talk about the specific instances. Because a lot of times, parents don't even know. You heard that. You saw that. Yeah. So talk about the specific things that happened that really caused some of these feelings. And the final thing is to resolve for the future to know how we're going to continue this dialogue. And there are some things even going forward. Some kids still 20, 30 years later are still hearing their parents badmouth each other. So badmouthing your spouse does what to the child it, or children? It pains the child when you criticize a child's parent, you criticize her DNA. It goes right to the source. And then, lo and behold, when that child grows up, and sees what you, the bad-mouthing parent, has done, they begin to hate you for it. So it works in the short run that you can bad-mouth the parent and make the kid hate the other parent, but when they grow up, they say, oh my gosh, dad wasn't that bad. Mom did this to me, if that's the situation, mm -hmm. and it works very much against you. And you can never give those years back to your child of a relationship that you stole from her and her parent. We'll be right back. Coming up, Gary's five rules to successfully have a conversation with your parents next. Tina, a 34-year-old wife and mother, is also still struggling to forgive her parents for their divorce. My father sat me down one night and told me that he and my mother were getting divorced when I was about six years old. I see, okay. Things started to really upset me when my dad stopped showing up to pick me up or he would say, I'll be there at such and such a time and I'd wait and I'd wait and he wouldn't show. And then I asked him at one point if you could um, come to a talent show that I was in. So I remember doing this little dance and looking at the door constantly, and he just never showed up. And how, how did you feel? Um, he just, you know, he was my dad, but he was my friend, and you know, he just didn't care. So I started wondering, you know, he was my buddy, what happened to him? I joined the police department when I was 29 years old. My father, you know, didn't come to my um, police academy graduation. Mm -hmm. So I felt like 
I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm 29 years old right. and I'm still looking at the door like I'm in third grade, you know? It's just ridiculous to me that I just couldn't let it go. So um, what was going on with your mom? When she started dating again, it became all about whoever she was dating. But I just, I remember her just being just gone, just absent a lot. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like I lost them both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would you say to your mother if you wanted her to understand you better or? or... Basically, I really just want to let it all go. You know, mm -hmm. I just don't know how to do it. Okay, so tell me a little more about what you need from dad. Um, it, he apologized to me. It would mean a lot. It would mean a great deal. I'd like for us to go back to being buddies again, you know? We'll be right back. Coming up, the moment Tina's waited 27 years for. That's next. All right, so Tina's parents are here. Her father, Terry, and her mother, Victoria, are here. And when you were, I was watching you crying because did you know she was hurting this much? Um, I knew, I knew that um, she was hurting, but um, we never really talked about it. Never really but talked I, about but it. But I've always had the guilt. Always had the guilt of the divorce? No. Yeah. No, um, just um, not being there when I should have been. Mm -hmm. I, I was just saying to Gary during the commercial break, I don't think fathers understand, and this happens with fathers more than mothers, what it's like when you say, I'm gonna show up to be there, and then there's this little kid who's sitting waiting for you to show up, and you, and you don't show up. Did you ever think of when, when you didn't show up, the many times you didn't show up, that you were hurting her? Oh, I knew I was hurting her. You knew? And I knew that after I had done it that that wasn't um, the way to go with that. Uh huh. But then you would do it again. Yeah, I've done it. I did it, and I think she just didn't want to be with me anymore after a while because she felt like um, I wasn't going to always be there for her. Uh huh. Uh huh. What do you want to say here, Gary? Well, it, it, it's uh, it's one of the most unfortunate things to tell a child that you're going to be somewhere and have them wait. You can't imagine a much more rejecting kind yeah. of feeling. And After you've it, already gone. Right. Yeah. And it causes such trust issues. You, you don't trust your environment so much. If the people that love you the most, you cannot trust them, what does that say to trusting your spouse one day, trusting others that you should be able to trust? It, it, it's so hurtful. It takes a lot of work to overcome. Yeah. Tina's father worked with Gary the other day and wrote a letter to his daughter. So, Terry, go ahead. Uh -huh. uh, it says, Dear Tina, this, has, uh, this letter has been a long time coming. There's not a day that goes by when I don't think of my mistakes over the past 30 years. I've attempted to write you a letter of apology three or four times, but shame and embarrassment always won out. So having this unique opportunity to try and return to your life means the world to me. Uh, I can only imagine your anger and disappointment in me as your father. I still remember not showing up for scheduled events in your life, and when I think about it now, I disgust myself. I, when I missed your police academy graduation and said it was a mix-up, you said no big deal, but I knew it was really a big deal. You have been kinder to me than I've ever, I've ever deserved. There is no way a simple letter of apology can truly heal the wounds of neglect, but starting somewhere is important to me. I can only pray for your forgiveness and hope you allow me to be more than just a father by technicality. I don't know where to go from here except to say how truly sorry I am. Please forgive me. I love you, Dad. <laughs> it's, it's never, ever too late. And sometimes Dad felt, he told me, he felt like such a jerk for what he did that he could not even reduce it to a letter and felt it was so minuscule but you just, as a parent, have to start. What about all the parents right now who've divorced and it's been you know, 10 years, 19 years, 20 years, who want to begin the conversation? What should they do after watching this show today? Call their child, get together with them, and tell them, I really, really want to hear what it was like to be you. I can take it, I love you, and I care enough about you and us. 
that I want to move forward. I, I, can, I can just hear it. I just want to listen. Give the children permission to tell you how they really feel. Your adult children. Your adult children. And your, your, your little children, too. And your too. little children, too, if you're going through it, yeah. How does this make you feel, Victoria, hearing him apologize all these years later? It, it means a lot. And how did you feel hearing that from your father? It means, it means a great deal. It means the world to me. I feel like a big piece has been put back in my life, and um, I can move forward. Well, that's worth the trip, even to cold, minus 12 degrees Chicago. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thank you. So in closing, Gary, you want to say what to all the families who may be in this process? Well, you know, make the call. Write a letter if you need to get in touch with each other. Have a friend help you if Letter's you need good. that. You know, some kind of person to help mediate. And I think at all times... A letter is a good start if you don't feel like you can have the confrontation. Sure. A letter is good. Sometimes even having a letter and bringing it so that you can read it. Mm -hmm. Or bringing an aunt, uncle, friend, somebody who can be there to help facilitate, make sure everybody's listening to each other can be very helpful. How important is it to resolve this, bring this to some resolution, if you're an adult child whose parents divorce? It's, it's crucial because childhood counts. And when things happen to us, it still causes us to behave in what we call unconscious ways. Because you carry it into your marriage Correct. and into your families if you don't heal the wounds. Thank you. Thank you, families, for being courageous enough to show up here today. Thank you. You can find Gary Newman's five rules to begin a successful conversation with your parents about this on Oprah.com. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Yes, I do. Hi, YouTubers. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Now you can find new videos every day. They're the kind of videos that will make you look at life differently. They may even make you laugh a little bit. Subscribe to the own channel today, and we'll see you on YouTube.